Welcome to the presentation about the MBS plugins. My name is Christian Schmitz. I'm CEO of MongePad Software. MBS plugins exist now for over 20 years. And the creation of the plugins has been a full-time job over the years. And nowadays we even have a few additional helping hands. The MBS plugin is a huge toolbox. Really, it's huge. It enables a couple of more applications in Sojo, things you couldn't do without the plugin, especially if it depends on C libraries or threading. We provide a lot of things you couldn't do in Sojo directly, so please check the plugins and see what you find. So over 20 years we got currently about 40 plugins. Those are composed of 500 plugin parts and we just added 20 parts over the year. We have 68,000 items in our documentation. We have 2,700 classes and we have over 2,000 example projects. And we made sure that all those example projects still compile on the latest Sojo version. Talking about Sojo versions, here's the table of the different versions we support with the current Sojo plugins which is exactly all versions of Sojo. And with newer plugins we introduce support for newer Sojo versions because there are changes over time. A few of those changes are for example introduction of 64-bit support or ARM CPU support. We also had to adapt to GTK3 for Linux or to newer Chromium versions used for the HTML view on Windows. And recently we added newer support for the new Chromium version used in Sojo 2019 release 3. Also we recently added support for changes for the SQL plugin. So if you want to use our plugins with the latest version, make sure you use the latest plugins. We don't want to tell you everything in the plugin, but maybe just what's new within the last year. You can use a web viewer in Sojo with a built-in HTML viewer control, but maybe you want to use more. With VK Web View Control MBS, we provide our own HTML viewer for macOS 64-bit and 32-bit. This provides a control to use WebKit 2 in Sojo. You can evaluate JavaScript. So you can call any JavaScript on a website, fill in form fields or trigger JavaScript events. You can take a snapshot of the website as a picture, store it in a file. We can decide on policies. For example, if you get an URL, you can decide whether this should be loaded or whether you want to take the URL and perform a download. And we have the option to turn on private browsing, so a user can visit a website without being worried about anything stored in the cookie storage or in the history. With Continuity Camera, we got a nice feature from the Apple Frameworks available in Sojo. It's for macOS Mojave and newer, and iOS 12 and newer. And you can take a picture with your iPad, iPhone or iPod Touch and get the picture into your Sojo application on a Mac. 
Both devices should use the same iCloud account and should be nearby because the communication goes over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. When you have several devices, we offer you the possibility to show a menu to pick which device to use. So you can choose between an iPhone, an iPad or whatever other device you have nearby. When you trigger the command to take a picture, you get a little cheat dialog to ask the user to take the picture and your iPhone or iPad will, will light up and show you the user interface like this. You position your iPhone over the document. You wait for the iPhone to recognize the document as you see the yellow rectangle. Then you can click the button to take a picture. The picture is rectified and then stored for later. If you just take one photo, you return directly to your Mac application, but if you scan a document with several pages, you can take several pictures of several pages and then save them all as one PDF document to your Mac application. MES plugin supports LDAP and Active Directory APIs. We recently got the Open Directory classes for MacOS. That's a newer framework from Apple which abstracts from the old LDAP APIs. And with OD Session you can create a connection. Then you can use OD Query to perform queries against the server and get, get back records. You can also add new records or delete them. We still have our traditional LDAP classes available for cross-platform usage. And for Windows, we do have a special class to query the Active Directory system information. So you can query which user account is used with LDAP and which server, so you can make queries against that server. Copy file MBS. This is a class for the low-level copy API in macOS. It allows you to copy files and folders with big hierarchies and you can have a progress event. We yield so other threads in the background can continue to run and you can update your user interface while doing a copy process in the background thread. You can copy recursively big folder hierarchies and there are flags for what to copy and how to copy so you can decide whether metadata is copied, whether permissions are preserved and whether files should be actually copied or cloned. For macOS we support the vision framework in the recent macOS versions. So you can analyze pictures, detect rectangles, detect text areas, actually recognize the text, detect barcodes, and on macOS 10.15 you can also recognize humans or animals, or you can classify an object on a picture. or you can classify an object on the picture. All those methods use built-in machine learning functions on MacOS, so you benefit from Apple updating their models. With TagLib we have a cross-platform library available, which we can use in Sojo to work with metadata in audio files. You can read and write audio tags, like the author or the title of a song. This works, for example, with ID3 tags in MP3 files. For LZ4 compression, we got a cross-platform library built into our plugins. So you can use LZ4 compression and this compression is optimized for speed. It may not compress as much as other high performance compression 
proteins, but it's very, very fast on decompression and it's nowadays even built into the Linux kernel. So you can decide whether you want to have a fast compression or you want to receive the smallest possible size by using more CPU cycles. Anyway, the decompression is as fast as possible. We support the use of Java code in Sojo for a couple of years already. So you can load an existing Java archive, load classes, make instances, call methods, get and set fields. The newest functions we added is to be able to use variant data type in Sojo for parameters, results and field values. So our methods to call a Java method, whether it's a static or a normal one, take uh, parameters with variance. We convert those parameters to the Java data types and then when the result comes back, we convert it back to a Sojo data type. This works well for integers, doubles, strings, various objects, including dictionaries and arrays. You can also get and set properties on the Java classes. Those are called fields and this works for regular fields as well as for static fields, which are global variables. You can also use the new object function to call the constructor for a class to get a new object and also pass the parameters as variants. With older plugins you had to build a memory block with all the parameters yourself and now we are doing that behind the scenes. And even if you pass in for example a string and we need an integer, we perform the conversion from the text to the integer. For Windows we got a class for pipe. This is a one-to-one -one IPC socket, so you can send data from one application running on a computer to a different application. It can work in two modes. There's a message mode, which allows to send whole messages, and on the other side you receive the message once it's, a, it's received completely. Or there's a byte mode, like in the normal Sojo sockets, where you have to check yourself whether the whole package is arrived. And there's a little method to enable the connection to other user's application, so your user interface application in the foreground can talk to a system service running in the background. The MBS plugin includes a JavaScript engine based on the open source duct tape library. It allows you to run JavaScript within your application. This can be used on client and server code, so you can decide to use it in a web application on the server or use it in a desktop application on the client. You can also use it in a console application if you like. You don't need any HTML viewer as we use the built-in JavaScript library and not the one from the HTML viewer here. You can send JavaScript code to the library to evaluate it, get back the result. We convert all the parameters from Sojo data types to JavaScript and back. So you can send in your JavaScript code as text and we run it and give you the result on the native data type. You can also register functions written in JavaScript or Sojo. For a JavaScript function, well, you just pass the body text of the function with the function name and the parameter list to the plugin and we um, register it for the JavaScript environment and then you can use it in any other JavaScript code. For Sojo, we use a delegate. So whenever the JavaScript engine needs to run this function, it will call the delegate and run your Sojo method. 
So you can add your own methods to the JavaScript environment, which call back to Soju code to actually do things within your application, like showing a window. We have functions to get and set local variables. We have convenient print and input events. So you can just implement a print command to print to a console window and receive status information from your JavaScript code. For all the function calls, we translate the data types between JavaScript and Sojo. And this should work fine for all the usual data types like integers, strings, doubles, arrays. And you can save functions as a precompiled function definition and later load it back. With our multi-threaded methods, you can run JavaScript on a preemptive thread, keep several CPU cores busy and perform JavaScript code in the background. Together with the functions to get and set global variables using memory blocks, you can have JavaScript and Sojo work on the same memory with the same memory block and have the JavaScript code, for example, process some data in the memory block and you use the, X, um, and you use the result in Sojo. Windows Media Foundation Player. You can load an audio or video file. You can play it. You can show the video with a canvas control. You can change the volume, the balance, the rate. You can mute the video. And you can step through the frames of the video if needed. And you get a lot of events. So if the position changes within the video, you can get an event and show the current position. Or you get an event when the media is at the end and you can load the next video. If you need click events, you can just add a mouse down event to the canvas control because we just use the canvas control for the output and you can use the other functions of the canvas to do whatever you need. Image Magic 7 can be used to create, edit, compose or convert bitmaps in various formats. The MES plugin supported ImageMagic 6 for a long time and now we created new classes for the version 7. The newer library has different classes, so we had to rewrite it. But we gain a lot of new features. With one set of classes, we can support all the color devs available, including the HDR support. So when you get a library built for a certain color dev, we can load the library, ask it for its color dev, and then use the code functions based for that color dev. As ImageMagic supports over 200 file formats, you can convert pictures of various formats using our classes and use all the image effects available in ImageMagic 7. Algorithms. If you have the need to solve a Boolean satisfiable problem using the li library of LGL, you can use the MBS plugin class to do so. We also support loading the LMFIT library and support it with a class. So you can use the Levenberg Markant least square fitting algorithm to work on your data. Both things are not so heavily used, but if you need that, we have it. For the HTML viewer on Windows, we got new classes. So instead of having all the methods on the HTML viewer class as extensions, we now have dedicated classes for document, for window, and for other things. You can now evaluate JavaScript and get the result. For over 10 years, you can already run JavaScript, but now we can not just run it, but also give you back the result from the JavaScript directly. 
This allows you to write code on Mac, Windows and Linux now, use our plugin functions and on all platforms get back the result immediately. You can also call a function here and as a specialty to make it easier for you, we also support passing parameters as variants. So you can pass in your function parameters with social data types and we get you the result as a variant. The navigate function allows you to load a website and send along the data for post operation and custom headers. This is a great thing because a few websites can be triggered with a post operation where you send in some JSON or XML and you get back a website with a result and you can show it immediately in the HTML viewer. And the custom headers allow you to send a custom user agent string so you can claim that you are Firefox maybe or Safari instead of being detected as Internet Explorer which may help you to pass some websites which check for the browser. With the latest MBS plugins we support AirPlay playback in your application. We have the AV root detector class to find whether there are more audio routes available. And then we have AV root picker view to actually show the standard user interface for macOS to pick the device you want to play back with. This may be your HomePod from Apple or just the Mac on the other side of the room. You can use it with AV Player class, either with a built-in movie player or with our own AV Player View Control which implements the standard user interface from Apple's AV Player. We support core machine learning classes from Apple for some time now. And the latest version allows you to update the models on the device. So you can load a model to classify a picture. You can check if the picture is classified correctly. And then you can, if you detect the picture is not perfectly matched, you can make a correction and this updates the model file on your computer. The new function requires macOS 10.15. For Windows, we got a new set of classes for the file dialogs. And those have a few nice features, including custom controls on the file dialog. You can define your own labels, buttons, checkboxes, radio buttons, pop-up menus and text fields. We have a lot of events for those controls, so you can react on input from the user. And we have a lot of standard events like folder and selection change, so you can decide whether to enable some button when the selection changes. We enable multi-file selection if you set the flag for that. Here's our example project where you can use checkboxes to enable the various features and you see all the events from running um, a file dialog. Here's an example file dialog for saving. It shows additional metadata fields so the user can enter an author and a subject. There's a checkbox for a custom color and you can pick a color from a pop-up menu. There's a field for the field name label and you can pick the file type from the pop-up menu. We customized the title and the OK button. And when the OK button is clicked, you can query the fields for the values and then you can use this additional metadata to save the file. Last year we got a few improvements for our SQL plugin. We now support API 2 with the ROSET class and the newer execute SQL and select SQL methods. When you use those methods, you always get an exception if an error is detected. 
for all the older classes, no, for all the older methods, you have a choice whether you want to have exception raised or you just want to check the error property. But we already recommend you to always use the exceptions because it's so easy to miss an error. We have support for several database types, including kubesql. And kubesql has a few nice file data functions, which allow you to read and write files on the server. And so we got our, res our receive data and our send data functions for kubesql. So you can pass data to the server for a file or receive data from the server. And for kubesql, we also got the SSL connection modes, so you can use encryption for your connection. And over the year, we made several improvements to get all the native database connectors to pass through in 64-bit and unsigned in 64 without converting them to text in between. MBS plugin supports over 80 different barcode types. Here you see a chart with 30 different barcode types. And if you have a client project where you need to generate barcodes, like for example, if you're in Switzerland and you need to put your payment data on the invoice as a barcode, you can do that with the MBS plugin. We also support recognizing over a dozen barcode types. So if you have a picture scanned with our scanner support and you need to detect the barcode on the piece of paper, you can do that too. Shard Director got improved last year with a new release of the Shard Director library. We have more examples updated for higher resolutions and newer soldier versions. Our pictures are now returned with the resolution property set. So they show in the correct solution if you assign them to the backdrop of a window. We got an update to fix the font handling for macOS Catalina. And we got a few functions to help you working on dark mode. Here's a screenshot of four different charts. You can use a lot of options to customize the charts with gradients, with using pictures for your items, or including custom fonts. DynaPDF 5 update is coming later this year. It has been in works for a couple of years and it's really difficult because it's a huge update for our Unicode support. The plugin now includes the orthographic rules for legitus. So when you have some characters like those Arabic characters, if you want to display them properly as a word, you have to actually connect them and use different Unicode code points to show them on the PDF. Here's an example for Hello World. We also do automatic font substitution. So if the current font doesn't support the characters you want to write, we can take those characters from a different font. This is a process you have to do manually currently. And we not just sign PDFs digitally, we can also verify those. Here's a sample text, which we processed to DynaPDF 5. All the characters got connected for the various uh, languages. And if you look here, you see a text which looks nice. But if you would just pass in the original text to the DynaPDF engine, it would look differently in DynaPDF 4. Over the year, we had a couple of changes. We removed all the carbon-only functions, especially carbon user interface 
are soldiers nowadays using only the Coco framework. And our removal includes all of the quick draw code. So graphics is now done via core graphics on macOS. We can still build Real Studio plugins and for some clients we still do, but if you need them you have to ask. In general we are continuing just building Soldier plugins for the public. And for the Mac App Store we are doing changes as needed. Apple deprecates older APIs, later asks you to remove them from your application, so the plugin has from time to time to be updated to remove the usage of some deprecated or removed features from macOS. And we have some features coming in the next releases. On the social form there was a thread where we asked you for your wishes and thanks everyone who answered. And here are three things we want to show you today. First, we are getting some SceneKit improvements. SceneKit is a 3D engine in MacOS, which you can use for a lot of 3D graphics in your application. And we are adding hit testing. So you can take the coordinates from a mouse down event and ask the scene which node was hit by the mouse and then you can react on the mouse click. And we are adding some physical world classes for physic effects. This includes gravity, so you can define where the bottom is and have gravity uh, move objects automatically towards the bottom line. You can do hit testing, so you can have balls uh, bouncing off the wall. And for that we are adding newer classes for various shapes, bodies, force fields and behaviors. You would use a force field to define the wall around your uh, game field. And then you would define the behavior that the force field would just let the ball bounce back. For more information, please watch Stephanie's presentation about SyncIt, as she has developed a few nice examples for it. Another big thing we are adding is the Photos framework. Apple provides a big framework to access the Photos database on MacOS. And you can do that from Sojo now. And I imagine there can be a lot of new utilities working on the Photos database written in Sojo. And a lot of existing Sojo applications working with Photos can be adapted to use the Photos database directly. We add 37 new classes. And you can work with assets, collection and projects. So you can read existing pictures, existing collections or projects. You can create new ones and you can modify the existing ones. You can show live photos with our new control. And this framework uses a lot of asynchronous processing. So we added a lot of delegates for you. When you call a method to load, for example, a picture, you get back a call to your method as you pass it in and we will call it back with the picture and this may include several callbacks. For example, if you load a picture you can ask for a thumbnail first and then later for the full picture. This allows you to quickly show the thumbnail and later when the full picture data is downloaded from the internet you can show the full picture data. Those functions need MacOS 10.13 in general, but some features are requiring 10.15. And if you want to use Photos Library, please include the usage string in your info plist. And if you do the hardened runtime with code signing, 
please also include entitlements for the photos application. Otherwise, the dialog box to ask for permission will not show up and your application may not get access to the photos library. Here's an example project where we just loaded a few live photos. So if you move the mouse over the live icon, it will playback the video as well as we call the start playback method when we load a new live picture from the library. And the third thing we show you is maybe the biggest addition. We are adding a remote function call interface for SAP. A lot of people may have in bigger corporations an SAP installation and you can now connect from Sojo to the SAP databases. You can call remote functions, get back data or insert data. And I would imagine that this can enable a lot of new projects where the developers writing code for SAP can now use Sojo to write their little helpers or even write nice front ends where Sojo would do the user interface and just push the data to SAP. We support macOS, Windows and Linux. If you want to download the NetWeaver Alpha C SDK, you need of course an SAP login and if you want to develop something and actually use it, please get the required SAP licenses for the users. With our classes, you first load the library from the SDK, then you can query descriptions for the functions, you can call a remote function, and you can use classes for tables and structures. Think about a structure as a record set, where you have one record, and then the table is a set of several records where you can walk over the records like in a database. You can also use transactions if you like. And here is an example screenshot of a test project. SAP comes with an example project where they include the data for some airlines in the database. And we just made a little test project where we load the list of airlines and then we load the list of tickets or airplanes and you can see the results in the in the list box. But this is just an example for how to connect to a SAP database and how to call methods to get back the results. Now it's time for questions. If you do have questions, please email us, ask on the Sojo forum. The new plugins will be available in early April with the first version of the 20.2 pre-release 1. And we are still working a little bit on documentation and examples. But if you like to test something today, please don't hesitate to email us to get an early version Thank you for watching.